Hello, movie trivia schmodown universe. We are so excited for season eight. Season eight is the biggest season that we have ever done. And we have launched the schmodown faction merch. That is right. Faction merch from all eight factions. They are available now. You like swag? Well, get a swag hoodie. Put on that hat with corruption hat. Put the shirt on. Get the championship design. Anytime you purchase faction merch, a percentage of the profits go into a pool. It is going to contribute to what the factions are playing for. Hell, I want to see them playing for $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. I want to see them playing for what they are able to play for, what they have deserved to play for. Who's the faction I'm supporting? Who do I want to win? And I get it. So head on over to the Skybound store now. The link is in the description of this video. If you're watching your favorite factions and you know when they're going to be competing, put on the shirt, put on the hoodie, put on the hat, and let us know. Take some pictures, tweet it out, hashtag Schmodown, and we will retweet it and show everybody who you are supporting. Enjoy the match, enjoy the merch, and we'll see you next time. Hmm. <laughs> Wait till she gets a load of this. Uh, hey! Can I help you? Uh, do your job and uh, let me order some McMuffins. I want like a triple banger. I want three boxes of McMuffins. I can't get enough. And who better to get those McMuffins than Miss McMuffin? Ugh, you know what? I'm so sorry, sir. Turns out we're all out of McMuffins. Uh, but you know what we do have today? We have a, a kid's meal. It comes with a hamburger and a little action figure of Andy Dalton. Everyone's favorite James Bond character. Oh, you're hilarious. Yeah, I know. Well, Thank you. McDalton would like a McMuffin. Uh, he deserves that. He's a great player, and I don't like the disrespect. And I would like a McMuffin. And you know what? Maybe a milkshake. And maybe, you know, blend it with some McMuffins. Let's have a McShake. You know, it's a it's a really cute prank. This is a good prank. What what you mm -hmm. could do is just try to um, win and have some respect for other people. What you should be ordering is maybe like a book on pronunciation or just like a book about like, I don't know, like the English language. I think my kid's kindergarten, it's, you know, it's done now. I can let you have his old materials if that would help you at all. You want to order that? Is this how you're supposed to talk to your customer? I'm a paying customer. Okay. I don't have to pronounce things. Mick, as in McMuffin. Okay, so this is what I'll say. Yes, this is how I would talk to customers if they were as idiotic and egotistical as you. Preston's real. Deal with it. Good luck. Preston's real as my McMuffin, which I don't not be holding right now, which I should be. What's going on? What about my McMuffins? <sighs> everybody, welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. I'm Christian Harloff, joined as always by Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. And Mark, this is a really, really good singles matchup here today. There are like different tiers inside of the singles division. People who are right there, right on the edge, close to getting to those championship matches. There's the rookies who are trying to prove themselves and show. And then there's this tier that just with a couple of wins can get themselves towards the edge and towards a way to get to that number one contender. And we are in that said tier today. JTE, who has been playing so great, has already got himself to a finals and a teams tournament this year, has already won one match in singles, a great triumphant return from the former team's champion against Paul Preston, who was also having a good year thus far. Uh, had a great free-for-all showing, re fought really hard in his team's match, um, and had a great singles victory against James White. So this is a big match for both these guys here today. It really is. And when you look at JTE, sure, he has that championship medal that is predominantly with teams with his former partner, Jeff Snyder. Him and the Patriots were lights out for so many seasons, it felt like. But that always elusive singles belt has managed to elude him. And Paul Preston, I mean, you talk about close runner ups, both him and his former movie guy buddy, Adam Witt. I mean, they just get so close, Christian, and it's just like, oh, you can't quite get over the hump. Well, both of these fellas have a chance to make quite the singles division statement with a win over their opponent today.
Yeah, it's big for the Den, who could pick up some points here as they're a little, a little behind in the standings. But they're making what the Den's doing is they keep throwing these shots that doesn't put the, it doesn't put them out. It just gets them over the hump, and they're able to keep doing that. The exchange started out super hot. They've had a couple of losses here and there, but for the most part, they're still in the run for this thing. So this is a big, big match for both factions both guys and i want to see all the smack talk that we know that we've gotten there these are two massive personalities and let's see some of that right now okay it arrived got my letter from christian telling me who i'm gonna play next in the schmoda I'm gonna play Jade. Christian, I'm the powder keg. And your winner! The powder keg! Paul, this is your first win since 2019. I'm sure this okay. feels good. You know, studying and all that stuff, where it, it needed to fall on me because I've been riding on what I know for too long and now I needed to get in there and dig and, and study. And people are do around me are doing it. I couldn't ignore it anymore. And yeah, it pays off. And I gotta play the other guy in the Patriots. Who's next? Philip Michael Thomas, Andrew Ridgely. JTE and Gucci, God, it's like a pilot. People keep pitching and no one wants to see. I feel better about Ben not winning the way he won today than I would if JTE was mine and I won the way he won. Me and, J me and JT together are unstoppable. We always were. JTE never misses his fives. This guy is unbelievable on so many different levels. He is the cornerstone of the Finstock Exchange. Look what he did already. He took care of business against Ben Goddard. Then we got ourselves a TKO right off the bat with our first tag teams match. We're all leading by example. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, if it doesn't work the first time around, let's try it seven more times. <laughs> Grab it down. If JTE's won 10 and lost 10, that means he's 50-50. Guess what? Won one, lost one, 50-50, baby. James White brought his best game, and I beat him. I'm your best game killer, and I'm about to end the JTE comeback. That's enough. Let's go, little ego. JT doesn't have any respect for Paul Preston as he doesn't have any respect for most people. And he, and he talked about how he, he met Preston once at a trivia game all those years ago and said, why is this guy even talking to me? I, I'm JT. I'm a champion. This is who, who is this character? And Paul Preston in the battle of wits, you might think Paul Preston's going to win, but you never know. JTE has some really good zingers. So I don't know what's going to happen as far as the zingers go, but I also don't know what's going to happen as far as the trivia. He really does have some good one-liners. Now, would I trust him to read a sentence out loud? Probably not, but Paul Preston can fire right back. And so with these two, you don't have to read anything out loud. You just have to get movie questions correct, and they're both really good at doing just that. All right, well, you're really good at calling these matches with me, and that's why I'm glad you're here. You're ready to get going. That's what the wave is for. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Three rounds in the singles division. Introducing first, representing the Den with a record of four wins, three defeats, and one knockout. He is the Powder King, Paul Preston. Paul Preston now, once a lot of people said we look like one another, now he is sounding something like me as well. Paul, you know, I've seen what you and JT have been doing, whether it's on social media or whether it is uh, the promo that we just saw. I, this is a former team's champion. Do, do you have any respect for this man? Uh, listen, uh, my, my fans out there who love the powder keg, the keggles, they want to see me to stay above 500. So, yeah, I want to do this not just for me and a little bit of revenge factor. But, yeah, so, that, so uh, any mouth and off that he does, look, 
the Finstock Exchange, they come in with their egos. They talk, 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 talk. Nobody likes them. Like nobody likes the, the guys at the Stock Exchange, right? These are all one to the end douchebags. And I'm here to sort of knock them down, put them in their place and make sure that I get out on top. And by the way, yeah, we kind of, yeah, I don't know if we're looking like each other anymore. I can't see how much weight you guys have gained, but you both got the facial hair going. It's sharp. Thank you. Oh, thank Well, I, I'm going to take that as a compliment towards me and I'll pay one right back with your manager because Kate really cares. She really cares. She's very competitive, but she's also classy, usually, whether in victory or defeat. So what have you and her talked about as far as facing this particular opponent? Because you know the Finstock Exchange loves nothing more than getting into people's noggins. Yeah, you know, uh, stay on target is pretty much, you know, the classic phrase from Star Wars. That's the deal. Stay on target. Whatever nonsense you hear these guys are yammering on about, just let it go and focus on the prize, all right? And the prize is not just my advancement in singles play to get to where I need to be. A little bit of revenge as well. I mean, this is the guy who knocked out Ben Goddard, okay, in the, in the last game they played. Ben's my guy, all right, from the outsiders. So I, I can't have that. So it, it's kind of like, look, the den, bunch of lions who take care of each other, all right? And if you knock out Simba, Mufasa's going to come down on you hard. All right, well, good luck to you, Paul Preston. We'll see you in just a moment. And his opponent representing the Finstock Exchange. With a record of 10 wins, 10 defeats, and one knockout, he is the former Goofy Trivia Schmodown Team Champion of the World, Little T-E-O-K-T-E, a big day here for the exchange obviously today you have this match your team's partner john roca faces ben bateman on the pay-per-view tonight but you started out against the powder keg paul preston now i ask you the same question i asked him any respect for the powder keg a little bit here's the thing i first met paul preston before the showdown he used to run this movie trivia night at this mexican restaurant and i would go get some tacos and i would listen to his trivia and i would usually win every time i went uh and i kind of judged his questions a little bit some were too easy some were actually too hard at times so i don't know like how much that's going to play into this game like how much did he re actually retain from doing that night but i will say this that Mexican restaurant actually closed down. Was it due to COVID? Was it because his trivia nights just weren't up to his par? I don't know. But I miss oh, those tacos. Fair enough. Something about you coming on screen or maybe saying that just makes me hungry. But you seem very hungry this year of a different sort. You seem really on a mission to, to get wins, to get respect, to get back to that, what Christian was referring to as the top tier in the singles division. How are you going to do that? And what would a victory over Paul Preston today do for those chances? Well, you guys have said my record. I want to be above 500. So this to me is pretty important because I just want to get my record just a little bit better on paper. Um, and yeah, I want to get that belt. I want to shot that belt. I got close once. I went to the tournament and I went to the tournament finals with Sam Levine. Just lost that match. You know, a worthy opponent. So this really is just, I'm excited to get back into it and play some of these people that I haven't played yet. And to, again, silence the doubters who say, oh, JT, the game passed you by. I think I shut up a lot of those people so far this season but i'm looking forward to do even more uh paul preston you know any guy that has a hat with no top because he has enough hair to not need a top i already don't like you you're on my enemies book look at that hair coming out of there and all right book. <laughs> so we have both the powder keg and little evil are here today and mark what are the rules of round number one Good lettuce on top of Paul Preston. As for JTE, it's more like an Arizona style lawn. <laughs> Round <you>. number one, <laughs> eight questions in eight different corners of movie trivia schmodown goodness. Your first, last, and every question in between is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. At least there isn't in round number one. You have 15 seconds to get that correct answer from inside your head, regardless of how much hair is on top of it, onto whatever writing surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Our mind each competitor, you have one challenge. You may utilize at any point throughout the three-round match. We'll bring in managers. We'll delineate and deliberate to our heart's content. It will ultimately be your manager that confirms if said challenge 
is taking place. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, JTE. He was this guy who used to intern for us. Anyway, he's got a rule <laughs> named after him, and that is your repeat rule. If you need to use another 15 seconds to get that correct answer, you didn't hear the question right, use a JTE rule. Oh, my God, Christian, I just realized that's one of the guys competing today. Yeah, it is. He's got his well, there's <laughs> He has his own rule, but it's, it's not something you really should brag of. It's because he was, you know, taking advantage of everything. All right, here Come is on. the... Mark, I got to ask first. I asked that okay. gentleman, JT, are you ready? I am ready. I asked Paul Preston, are you ready, sir? Uh, Mark Ellis, I'm Heary. I'll answer your query. Get used to it. Then let's get ready to slow down. Round number one, question number one. We're going to start with directors. Kevin Reynolds directed which actor? as the lead in the films Waterworld and Robin Hood, Prince of Thebes. Thebes. You like the way I said that, Mark? Thebes. I think that JTE and Paul Preston could play Thebes in a movie. <laughs> they really do look like they should team up for some sort of ill-fated bank robbery. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. A uh, little evil. Kevin Costner. Yes, and Paul Preston. Kevin Costner. It is a tie game so far, and now we get to question two. That's right. JT even spelled it right. He's one for one in that category. <laughs> Your next question in the world of drama and the query for a point. Who plays the lead role of investigative reporter Cal McAfee in the 2009 political thriller State of Play? So what this is it. Yeah, go ahead. I was just thinking about this matchup, and you're looking at really what two of the fiercest competitors Five, we've ever seen. Four. They're, they're very evenly matched. Three, yeah. two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. Uh, and we start with Paul Preston this time. Russell Crowe. Yes. And mm. JTE. Missed it. Ben Affleck. Wow. All right. So Paul Preston goes up, as Dagnino is definitely upset about that, as I remember being at a fight one time watching on TV and. Tiagnino said, look, it's Russell Crowe. And the whole room just stopped. All right, here is the third question. Here is the third question. And it is going to be mixed bag. Which year saw the release of the following films? The Last Starfighter, Gremlins, and Dune. Story time with Uncle Christian warrants a follow-up. Was it actually Russell Crowe or was it one of No, it was. It was. It was just so bizarre because we were about to watch this big fight and, and just like pan to the audience. I saw him and he screamed at the top of his lungs. Five, four, three. He was a repeat. Two. JT uh, me. Yeah, we're going to JTE yourself. All right, and mm -hmm. here's the first <laughs> one. All right, here's the first JT mm -hmm. for you. Which year, saw, which year saw the release of the following films? The Last Starfighter, Gremlins, and Dune. It's the first JTE rule by JT. Surprising that JTE can JTE himself, and we can put it on camera. <laughs> and two hands up for everybody. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and JTE. It's a guess. 86? It's incorrect. Paul Preston? 84. Yes, sir. Paul Preston <laughs> looking pretty good right now. 3-1 with a two-point <laughs> lead over JTE as we get to our next question. Yeah, pretty good Van Halen record came out that year, too. Your next question in the world of biopics, and it is, who plays Fred Rogers in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood? Well, it wasn't me, Mark. No. So you'd be, you'd be incorrect if you answered that it was me. Okay, well, let's just practically give him the answer. It wasn't me either, boys. So oh. so don't do that. Up you whittle Five, it down. Four. Little. I see what you did there. Three. Two. One. Oh, you said Whittle. And pens down, and now we start with Paul Preston. Tom Hanks. Yes, and JT. Tom Hanks. JT getting back on the board, and it is 4-2. Preston with a two-point lead over JTE, and here is the next question. We're going to go with animated. Tina Fey voices the character 22, who is trapped in the great before in which Pixar film? favorite number 22 but you know jt just doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that really cares about perfect rounds or stats he just wants to get into a street fight that's very true if we've seen it five four three two one pants down hands up and jt 
Soul. Yes. And Paul. Soul. Paul Preston, still perfect throughout five questions here. And here's question six. <clears throat> and it's in the category of horror slash thriller. Scary movie. <laughs> oh. Horrifically timed. Your question for a point. What 1990s horror film has the tagline, someone has taken their love of scary movies one step too far. Solving this mystery is going to be murder. It's a good tagline. I uh, did some stand-up with uh, the Sklar brothers the other night. Ah. Frequent basketball opponents of JT. And my good story about them, too. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we're going to start here with Paul Preston. Scream. You got it. JT. Scream. Okay, so still a two-point lead, but Preston at the moment is two away from a perfect round. It is 6-4 at the moment. And we get to our next question. This is Family Films. Which 1996 family film from director Danny DeVito follows a bright little girl with special powers whose insensitive parents... Send her to a school run by a cruel authoritarian. Wow. You like that read? That was pretty good. It sounds Thanks, like man. sounds like you lived it. Sometimes I feel like I have, Mark. You want a hug? Yes. Five. Four. Three. Two. I felt that. One. Pens down, please. Hands up. And we're gonna start with JTE. Uh, Matilda. Well done. And Paul. Matilda. Okay, so Preston at the moment working on a potential perfect round should he get this question right. If he does, he'll get a bonus question. Mark, this is the eighth question. And it's in the category of Oscars, the most prestigious ceremony of the year. So good, it doesn't need a host. Your question for a point, gentlemen. For what film did Alicia Vikander win her Best Supporting Actress Oscar? Well, obviously, JTE looking to try to stay in line with Preston's score and hoping that Preston misses here so he doesn't get that bonus. Could have a bonus point. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and Preston for the perfect round. The Danish girl. He does it. JTE? The Danish girl. He's got it, but Preston, because he hits that perfect round, is going to get a bonus question. Paul, this is for you and only you. You don't have to write it down. You simply have to answer it with 15 seconds to answer said question. Here it is. How many total Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle films have there been released to date? 20 seconds for this one. Six. That is correct. For one more point, Paul Preston with a brilliant, brilliant first round and finds himself up by three. Nine six over the former team's champion. It is nine six, and round number two is about to begin. It is. Coincidentally, none of those six TMNT movies needed Raphael at all. In the wheel round, that's round number two. It's the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. We don't have the kind of bread to send you each a wheel, so it's virtual. You'll spin it with your mind. Once you settle on a category, four questions emerge from that particular round. Questions worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which we believe is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. That's important because stealing is available in round number two. If you miss the question, your opponent can steal. There is no penalty for missing a question other than, you know, the threat of stealing. All right. Well, with that, we are going to give Paul Preston, who is in the lead at the moment. Paul, would you like to spin first or defer to your opponent? I'll spin first. <laughs> All right, Kate, 60 seconds starting Thank now. Thank you. Okay, Paul, so here's the strategy from here on out. What? Oh, oh, you're calling. Hello? Yeah, listen, I don't want these, uh, you know, if we were playing a live match or in the studio or anything, people wouldn't get to hear what we're talking about. Oh, so my God, figured, you're... Okay. I don't want these Chatterheads uh, hosts to know what we're talking about or any Smart. of the other players, so I figured make it a phone call, right? 
then they can't hear us. I love so it. So what do you got? <laughs> I love it. Uh, you are, uh, we always talk about it because I always say, uh, you, you know, when you when you have a perfect round and then get the extra point, which is going to happen. And then look what you just did. <laughs> you just executed it. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to say this out loud. Um, have fun having a perfect second round. Have a great spin. Let's have fun. I'm glad no one else heard this. I'm going to get really so many good strategy. bonus. I'm going to get so many bonus questions in the second round. It's going to be mean, crazy. You told them they have 10 seconds left. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I wish I could hear them. But anyway, let's. Uh, should we just tell them we should spin? I have limited minutes. I should okay. go. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Still on a track phone. Okay. Goodbye. Good we'll talk, spin. Guys. I was and on the line the whole time. Yeah. Oh, you were. Okay. Yeah. Well, here is the spin by Paul Preston. Let's see what he's going to take here. Christian, I was on the phone with them the whole time. You know what I heard? Comedy gold. Yeah, it was good. I can't believe he NSA'd us. And we're going to land on new oh, releases. Oh, new releases. So you got 60 seconds to decide if you want to stick with new releases, Paul. Polly P, I'll tell you what. Today, that question that you knew the answer to, I was very impressed with. But it's really up to you. I mean, there's obviously things that we prefer on the wheel, but there's also some other stuff we don't. So, Yeah, let's stick with it. Let's stick with it. All right, so JTE is back. Paul Preston has decided to stay with the category of new releases. So, Paul, you're going to get four. Four inside of this category. Here is the first. All right. First question in new releases. Who wrote and directed Promising Young Woman? Emerald Fennel. That's correct. Two points. Ooh. Two was nominated for a Best Supporting Actor Academy Award for their role of Abby Hoffman in The Trial of the Chicago 7. Sacha Baron Cohen. That's correct. <clears throat> Question three. Colin Farrell and Judy Dench appear in what 2020 fantasy film? <clears throat> Artemis Fowl. That's correct. And for your final question in this round. Which horror film from director Natalie Erica James follows a family of women who are haunted by a manifestation of dementia that consumes their home? Dementia, D-E-M-E-N-T-I-A. And five. Repeat the question, please. All right, first one. Here it is. Which horror film from director Natalie Erica James follows a family of women who are haunted by a manifestation of dementia that consumes their home? And five. I'll take multiple. All right, multiple choice. Here are the options. Is it A, unhinged? B, The Rental, C, Antebellum, D, Relic. D, Relic. It's correct for one more point. So Paul <coughs> Preston, Paul Preston sees himself now 16-6, 10 over JTE, and now we get to round number, excuse me, JTE's wheel spin. Here we go. So we're going to drop out Paul Preston. <coughs> we're going to bring in Dagnino. 60 seconds, starting up. You know, we're, we're going to play darts later, right? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so and we played go go fish yesterday. I won, and then we bowled the other day as well, mm -hmm. and bowled a two sixty nine, and I bowled a two seventy one. Now, when we went, I got a pack of jumping jacks. Okay, okay, straight from San Diego. We we're gonna light off later after we win this match. You know, look, uh, this guy's a good player. We know that. Let's, mm -hmm. but we're better. Listen, Ben Affleck was in that movie. Uh, I didn't think they're going for the lead. I should have went Russell Crowe. That was my mistake. Um, but Russell Crowe. I feel pretty good. Uh, it's perfect, man. Don't worry about it. Let's spin the wheel. We'll I, I like it. I like everything on this wheel, so I feel pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, Love you, it. you didn't bowl with 271. What did you really bowl? It, it was in the twos. I, I just don't remember. It was like 40 or something like that. I, I'm, I'm fantastic at everything I do, obviously. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get the wheel up there. Here's a spin by JTE. Mm-hmm. Were there bumpers used? JT's <laughs> <laughs> a great bowler. I beat Cody Hall at bowling one time. I did too. Felt great. 
Keep going. All right, Keep it's going. looking like Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Halle Berry, 60 seconds to decide. <laughs> Halle Berry. Uh, hmm. so, so this is a tough time. I like a lot of things on this wheel. Um, I am down. The, honestly, the only thing I'm worried about is opponent's choice. True. Um, so do I stick with Halle or do I try to press my luck and go for a perfect round here? What um, do you think? I think it's a seldom used category okay. here. And you can mm. do it because you're perfect. Um, I think... You know what? On a couple of different scenarios mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. happened recently, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't feel bad about it. I would say, I, I would say, let's stick with it, man. Let's stick with it. I like Halle Berry. Yeah, I see right. almost all her moves. Let's do it. All right, JTE. Now, Mark will get four questions in the realm of Halle Berry. Halle Berry, friend of the show, Halle Berry. She's probably watching. Hello, Halle, and here mm -hmm. are four questions in your realm for Jitek. Josh. Two points for this first question, unless you need multiple choice, and it is mm -hmm. Halle Berry plays the character Sophia Al Azwar in what action movie franchise? It's only two. I'm thinking I'm gonna say John Wick three Parabell. Even more specific than we needed, John Wick is correct, and that is two points for JTE. Question two. And that is in the world of Halle Berry, Halle Berry plays the character Miss Stone in what live-action 1994 family film based on a TV cartoon? The Flintstones. Is correct for another two points. He's cooking early, Christian, and now his penultimate Halle Berry question in round number two is, Halle Berry made her movie debut in which film from director Spike Lee? Jungle Fever. It was a pretty good joint, that one. He's got six points of a possible six so far for a perfect round two in the world of Halle Berry. Here's his last question. What is the first name of Halle Berry's character in the film Catwoman? Hmm. Catwoman. I don't know if it's the real from the comics. Five, um, four. Let me go multiple three. choice. All right, you have four options for a point. Is it A, Selena, B, Ruby, C, Patience, or D, Helena? I believe it's C, Patience. Your belief has been minted into fact. That is correct for seven of a possible eight points in round two that he sorely needed, Christian. Now we only got a three-point ball game heading into the final round. Great round by both JTE and Preston, both just checking down a multiple choice once per opponent. And now we're going to get to the final round. It's round number three. Mark, what are the rules? In round number three, the round that will determine the match, each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same integers as your opponent. Why is that? Well, because each numeral corresponds to a unique category of schmodown goodness. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your final question is worth five gigantic points. They're so big, some may call them Tyrannoceratops points. No penalty <laughs> for missing a question. No stealing in round number three. It is Paul Preston who has the option of giving us his three lucky numbers first. Paul, you got a range of one to 20. Within that, what feels the most fortunate? Uh, let's go 12 seven and three all seven and three for preston and for jte we'll go 13 19 7. 13 19 and 7 for jte 12 7 and 3 for paul preston so we're going to drop jte out and we're going to bring in kate all right kate 60 seconds starting now <laughs> you there <laughs> oh my god <laughs> You are so amazing. I could, honest to God, the next time you sweat, I want you to put it in a cup for me so I can drink it. <laughs> I, you are the best player I've ever seen in my whole life. You're amazing, for real, though. Uh, oh, okay. This is your game at this point, and I got to tell you, uh, listen, you're up by three. That's massive, okay? Sweet. So stay stay in, the, stay in the pocket, my man. I think I will. I'll stay in a pocket. I'll yeah. be in a pocket is where you I'm want uh, I'm just really glad to talk hear this. Yeah. All right. Stay in my pocket, buddy. Talk to you soon, okay? See you okay, when you that's win. That's awkward. Bye. See you when you win. Bye.
Yes. Yeah, oh. so yeah. JT, before yes. your 60 second starts, we need you to select a different number that is not <laughs> seven. Yeah, do we need to re-record it? Nope. We're no. Just gonna yeah. give, okay, give just number right give me now. six. Give me six. Six it is. Thanks, Great. everyone. So, you, so you got 13, so 13, 19, and six. You got it. Look, buddy, uh, you know the deal here. Hey, I was in the same position with Ben Goddard. Yeah. You did you, five, you I did. I won the match. Five, that's all that matters. People choke on their five. You're the best five-pointer answerer of all time, and you know that. Snyder knows it. I mean, I mean, I know it. I mean, I'm pretty good at it too because I mean, I was in the whole manuscript at one time for us, and yes. then delayed the match like three months so we would lose, obviously, because the world yeah. fires yeah. against us on a consistent basis, and I'm <laughs> fine with that because, like I said, even if you lose, we still win. Yes. Let's go and get this guy. I'm ready. Let's go. All right, Mark. So round number three, it is about to begin. Our competitors are here. We're going to start with JTE, who's trying to avoid the TKO. And TKO. he began with 13. And that puts us in the realm of Westerns. Mm, okay. right, like your, uh, your cowboy buddy there. All right. So mm -hmm. JTE for two points. And this could pull you within one of Powder Keg's lead. Your question mm -hmm. in the world of Westerns is... In what Oscar-winning Western will you find a town sheriff named Little Bill and a gunslinger named English Bob? That would be Unforgiven. The great Unforgiven is correct, and he's within one of Preston's lead. <laughs> he is. So now we jump to category 19, where we now get to an actor. That actor would be Tom Hanks. Hmm. I hear he's done some popular work in the past. Uh, your question, <laughs> JT. This could give you the lead by two mm -hmm. points over Paul. What is the most recent time that Tom Hanks has been directed by Steven Spielberg? We need the movie. Um, that would be The Post. The kid knows his Tom Hanks, and now it is JTE who has the lead. Powder Keg will not be having a TKO today. He needs to answer some questions. Yeah, he needs to answer some questions. To tie JTE, he's got to hit his two-pointer. He's got to hit his two-point question. That would be category 12, Mark, and that would put us into your favorite. That's comedy. That's right. We don't laugh. <laughs> no, we don't. Hercules, Hercules. Too serious in <laughs> Far too dramatic. Okay. Paul? Yes. To tie the little evil next to you for two points in the world of comedy, your question, which famous musician plays an Italian-American widow that falls in love with Nicolas Cage in the 1987 romantic comedy Moonstruck. Sure. I think she won an Oscar. She won an Oscar. <laughs> we're, we're checking if she won an Oscar for that. Uh, Paul wins two points for that correct answer. So now it's tied. Powder, Keg, and JTE all knotted up. We're tied up, but because we have an opportunity for Paul Preston to take the lead here and throw it back to JTE to force him on his five, Paul's going to answer his three-pointer, and that would be category seven, and that would be scores and soundtracks. Scores and soundtracks. Joe Theismann's lucky number, and now it's a musical number for Paul Preston. Powder keg for three points, and the lead outright. In the world of scores and soundtracks, what 2014 film features the Oscar-winning song Glory, performed by John Legend and Common? Selma. Powder Keg is a three-point lead, and now JTE has a five-pointer. He's Let's got go. a half. All right, so now we are at we are at JTE. JTE needs to hit his five-point question. If he does, if JTE hits his five-pointer, then Preston will be forced to answer his. However, if he misses, then Paul Preston will pick up the victory. JTE, you chose category six, category six, and that would be Martin Scorsese films. And I have two uh, JTEs left, correct? You have two JTEs left. That is accurate. That's great. All okay. right. So here is the question. Here you go. Mm -hmm. You have two U's remaining. In yes. <laughs> Martin Scorsese. Two JT for means. Five points. Yeah. For the lead. In which Scorsese film will you find a character named Francine Evans who records the anthem, But the World Goes Round, that turns her into a popular figure in the music industry? <laughs> Round. 
Five. Four. Uh, JT. Three. Second one. All right, you have one remaining. In which Scorsese film will you find a character named Francine Evans who records the anthem, But the World Goes Round, that turns her into a popular figure in the music industry? I don't think there's any gangsters in this movie. <laughs> oh, that would help me if there's some gangsters in there. <laughs> Five. Oh, man. Four. Three. Uh, another yep. JT, me, please. Last, last one. All uh, right, categories, Martin Scorsese. Oh. The question. In which Scorsese film will you find a character named Francine Evans, who records the anthem, but the world goes round, that turns her into a popular figure in the music industry? This sounds nothing like this Scorsese movie. <laughs> sounds so different than... I, I'm going to take a shot here. I'm going to say New York, New York. Correct. JTE hits, JTE <laughs> hits the five pointer. Oh JTE hits the five point question. Mm -hmm. And because of it, Paul Preston forced to hit his five. Now, if Paul Preston hits it, he wins. He beats JTE. However, if he misses, JTE will win the game. All right. So Preston chose category three. That is category of action adventure. Action adventure. Adventure. Action All right. adventure for Paul Preston. For the five-pointer and the win, your question. In the 1984 film Red Dawn, which actor plays Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Andy Tanner that meets the Wolverines after being shot down by a jet fighter? Five, four, three, GT. Two. Uh, first one. All right. Two remaining. In the 1984 film Red Dawn, which actor plays Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Andy Tanner that meets the Wolverines after being shot down by a jet fighter? Five, four. JTE, final one, I think, right? Or That's the second one. That's the second one. Okay. Yeah. That's one. So it's one remaining. In the 1984 film Red Dawn, which actor plays Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Andy Tanner that meets the Wolverines after being shot down by a jet fighter? That no, is Paul Preston's last JTE. Right? It is. You're right. You're right. You're right. This is the last one. Thank you for clarification. Five. Michael Ironside. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Little yes. Evil! Yes! yes. KT! -E. The answer was Powers Booth. Powers Booth was the mm. answer. JTE getting the victory here. JTE, unbelievable comeback once again. Yes, sir. Let's go, baby. And does it in the world? Beautifully done. Wow. God. What a comeback! It's the second comeback. He did it against uh, Paul yes, Preston's. He did it against Paul Preston's Hold partner, Ben Goddard, and now he comes Hold back and does that. it. The New York, New York pull was a big Ooh. pull, Ooh. big pull, and it winds up winning him the game here because Paul Preston just missing. That's pretty close. Those two, those two pulls there. I was a very Great guess by Ironside. That was a good guess. It was the other Ironside. <laughs> it was Powers Booth. All right, Mark. That was a that was a battle. Paul Preston pretty much had JT's number the whole match, the same way that Ben Goddard had him. But that little evil, he just knows how to come back and fight back. And I thought he was dead. I thought he was dead to rights with that with the five pointer. I didn't think he knew it at all. And uh, and and yeah, that's it. So um, yeah, unbelievable. Great match. No, it, 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 we could both be accused and we would be guilty of underestimating his movie knowledge breadth sometimes because you ask him a Scorsese question, you assume he's thinking Goodfellas, he's thinking Mean Street, he's thinking Casino, he's not thinking New York, New York. Now, the question I would really love to ask Jen Sturger, maybe Jen's going to ask him this, is about that New York, New York pull. Did he have it the whole time? Was that gamesmanship or was it really down to his last second before he remembered that Scorsese did direct New York? New York for and an I interview did. and possibly to answer yeah. that question. We go now 
two, JTE, his manager, Gucci, and sorry to put you in this position, Jen, Jen Sturge. All right, I'm getting word that uh, Jen Sturge, the, the, the text is, no, thank you. You'd rather not talk to Gucci today. So that's fine. She she gets she gets a mulligan, if you will. Um, so listen, JTE, you did it again. You're like yep. a, a fighter, whether it's Mickey Ward or whoever it might be, and your back is against the wall, and it looks like you're out, and you throw that big haymaker, and you do it. You did it to Ben Goddard. You do it now to Preston. Uh, what do you think it is, man? Is staying in the pocket? Is it the years of practice? Listen, man, you, in this game, if you're a truly a great player, you're never truly out uh, unless you're getting TKO'd. You get me down to the five, and there's always a puncher's chance. Literally, Mickey Ward, a Boston native. He might be losing the match, but he's going to hit with that left of the body, and you're going to crumble down. Uh, Paul played a good game. Listen, the guy knows his stuff. Uh, I struggled a little bit in that first round. I wish I would have done a little bit better. Maybe use a JTE for that Russell Krogs. Ben Affleck was in that movie. But you know what? It feels good to beat this guy. Uh, Kay McMuffin, you know, bring out her whole stable. I'll beat them all. I already beat her team. Like, what else you got? Uh, do you really feel that that's her name? Or is it best in town? He is the yeah. best five-point answerer of all time. The man is a legend. He always will be a legend. That's why he's on the Finstock Exchange. What happens here is, like I said earlier, he can be down 25 points in the third round, still find a way to win. This is what this guy does. He's magic. It's he hard. Look, look, Gucci, it's hard. It's hard to argue with the fact you guys have been winning a lot of matches. Your rookies have been getting it done. You guys went far in the tournament, obviously. Uh, JT's been having a great season so far. Roka's got a big match here coming up in just a, a little bit tonight. So, uh, but JTE... This is for you, Dagnino. You know, JTE, you guys have gotten a lot of crap in the offseason. Why are you signing him for a free agent? He's proved he's one of your top earners, if you will, if you want to go to the Scorsese model. You know, he's one of your top earners right now. And what do you, uh, what is it about this? What is it about your dynamic that you and JT work so well? We've worked together for so long. I mean, we play, we bowl, we play darts, we light firecrackers, mm. we, we play golf, we cook steaks together. We have a bond that goes back a very long time you know and i don't we don't even have to we use mental telepathy to even to speak to each other at times we just see eye to eye i don't have to say anything to the man he just knows it uh you know what i have golf at at, at three o'clock he'll be there as well even in i didn't even invite him he just knows i'm going to be there right. so it's like we fit we fit like a glove you know and it's like the way it goes when we t took him on as the, uh, the third guy coming to our squad, he's a stabilizer. The man stops the bleeding. He stops the bleeding. Well, let he me stabilize this interview for a second. And let me say here, JTE, you know, mm -hmm. um, the other thing is right now, it's a good possibility. You might be getting what you asked for with Jeff Snyder with a possible match here. It's either mm -hmm. Jeff Snyder or it could be Liz Shannon Miller, one of those two. Um, not that they're playing each other, it's just a matter of how it, uh, you're going to get one of those two. We just don't know which one yet. How how would you feel about playing your former uh, partner who you've beaten in singles once yeah. before? I, I beat him before. Uh, I'd like to beat Liz sometime. I beat her in the tournament. For me, this was a okay day for me. And even when I'm having an okay day, I can still come out on top. It's scary. If I have a good day or if I'm having really? a good run, you're not even, you're TKO'd. Uh, so yeah. just be careful because you can't catch me. I don't really have a bad day. You can only catch me on an okay day or a really good day. Either way, I'm probably going to beat you. Well, you won again here today. Congratulations to you. And Gucci, before I let you go, you got a big match here coming up in a little bit. It's Ben Bateman and it's John Roca. I know how much this means to you because of all the – uh, the history between you and Bateman and you know, Carl like Bateman. yeah, sorry, Carl as you call him. Um, so what do you, uh, any, any notes or anything that you, any predictions for tonight's match? Pain. I knew you know what, you know what you, you, here's what you have to look at when with a guy like Bateman or Marty Jannetty or Burt Ward or whatever you want to call him. Cause he's JT's Mickey Ward, Bateman's Burt Ward, you know? Uh, so he's signing autographs and some, stupid conventions while Mickey Ward is like winning in life. And the thing is, you know, Roca, he knows what he needs to do here. Right. He's the GOAT law for a reason. This is the kind of win that will cement his legacy as being the best, one of the best players of all time. Because in my opinion, the real GOAT of the league is the man in the middle right here. 
This man is a complete genius, character work. He lulls people to sleep and then knocks them out with a haymaker. He is the best five-point answerer in the history of this game, and there's no question about it. Anybody who wants to contend on that, they, they're, they're wrong. Because the man just pulls it, and he's got such... You know what it is? He's got, like I said before, a manual dexterity, intestinal fortitude, and he leads people to believe that they can beat him. He think he leads people to believe that they think he's stupid, but he's the smartest person in the room. All right. Well, well listen, listen. Heart, heart of a lion, balls of an elephant. Well, well, you know. I mean, yes, laser eyes. Let's go. Congratulations to you both. You find up picking yourself up yet another win. Two points there for the exchange and another win for JTE. JT, you got yourself now to 11 10. It's the first time you've had a winning record in just a little bit, you know, over because of the rough start that you had in the first couple of seasons. But now mm -hmm. picking it back up, win another one, 2 0 in singles this season. Great season for JTE thus far. Hey. Thank you, Christian. Uh, awesome is a strong word, but yeah. I think that that probably gave you some appreciation as to how good Jen Sturger is her job. Because yeah. I know you were excited to do the interview initially. About halfway, it looked like you were just ready to wrap this damn thing up. But Gucci just kept throwing superlatives towards his boy's way. And why not? What a five-pointer pull that was on a was level good. of a Stacey Howard or a Josh McCuga. It was a good poll. It was, you can tell him kind of going through his head and his Rolodex of the Scorsese films and wondering if he was going to do it and throwing the guess out there. So JT does it. He picks up this victory and it is, it's well earned. He played really well and he's right. He is, he, he's, he's, his back is against the wall. And um, yeah, it was a hell of a match. But now Jen Sturger decides she's not actually, actually, to be completely fair, she's having technical issues. So we're not able to, uh, we're not able to have her on the second interview either. So. Hi. Hey, we're here with hey, we're here with Preston. <laughs> oh wait, I can wait. I can wait. I'm single parenting this weekend. It's all good. It's all good. And when Paul didn't win, someone had poopoos at that same instant. It was JT. It was JT. It was JT. It was both. It was all of us, honestly. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, guys, this is a heartbreaking one. I mean, because Paul, you know, this is a very different match, I guess, for you because you were. You were winning this kind of. It was very similar to the Ben Goddard match, and then you just got a question at the end was that something because we we talked about the powers booth and michael ironside it was was it just trying to remember which one of those two did you ever get the powers I mean, booth this is the, this i should have challenged right because who knows the damn difference between those two guys that's true christian who was in visiting hours uh, powers booth michael ironside yeah, who was see, in uh, sudden death uh michael ironside powers booth right, who was in extreme right. prejudice uh jt both of them Oh, both of them. Yeah, yeah. these. And that's a risky move for your production to put those two guys in the same movie and have the audience try and figure out who the hell I, they are. What do you think in regards to, to JTE? Do you, I mean, you know, obviously the Den has their problems with the exchange, as I think most of the league does. But is there, is there still, is there respect from a competitor like JTE watching what he uh, what what he's able to do and come back and to continuously to, to win? Based on the five-pointer, I don't have respect for him as an actor. That's for mm -hmm. sure. If there's yeah. one thing I learned from Tom Dagnito is that John Roca must be a real turd. Apparently, JTE is the greatest player in the history of everything. So, you know, I mean, maybe I could get on board that a little bit because he because he did win today. But uh, man, it was the, the man love over there. It was uh, it was it was it was something. It was something to be a part of. And uh, listen, I, I'm just uh, I couldn't have a better percentage of answering questions. Right. And then to be 500 is uh, it's it, this is brutal. Well, I'll know. tell you what else is brutal that you don't have to worry about anymore is me asking you questions. Because watch this trick. Paul, I don't understand how I keep seeing you here because I don't feel like your record is really or like the result is not indicative of how you play. All of your matches literally come down to the last question. And it's like, what are we going to have to do? to get to the next level? What are we going to do to get through this? Like, it's essentially like the third round yips, right? I don't know. I, I want to hug but I you. I sure hope we figure it out by 2022. Oh my God. I want to hug you so bad. Oh, because it's so frustrating. I don't know who I root harder for, you or Janine, because you're both amazing players. And I, I just look at you as two of the players in this league that the, the record just doesn't indicate the level of play that you play at. Oh, great. Kate, Compare me to Janine. She's done this losing for four years. I have two more to look forward to. What a oh. treat. Oh, I understand you're a little salty right now. Uh, Kate, how are yeah. you feeling after this? A bag of popcorn. I, I feel dead inside. I'll be honest. I feel like this is my guy, and I just, he outplayed him at 
every turn. We stayed with a wheel slice that was like not even like a, a preference necessarily. He got seven points out of it. It just comes down to the five pointer, and it's just it's just heartbreaking. Like it's not it's not a match I feel good walking away from. Also, if I was Gucci, I wouldn't feel I wouldn't feel great walking away from this win either. Yo, well, pick, up, pick up your game. They win even when they lose. So I mean, yeah, I mean, you figure that out for me. I gotta tell you, I that's not this is not the loss I want to have, and that is not the win I would want to have. It comes down to you you play terribly your whole match, and then at the very end you pull it out. Forget it. Yeah, we're it's I'm bummed for Paul because eh, I just he works so hard and he uh, he just deserves to have those W's next to his name. I know we're going to get over this one day. I know we're going to get over this hump and like we're going to reach the next level and like just scrape past this plateau. So I'm so sorry, Paul, that today just wasn't the day. Go get some new protein powder. Let's re up and, um, you know, we'll go on from here. Okay. See you next year. Next year, there's a tournament right around the corner, and there's a lot of other things around the corner. Paul Preston, obviously, uh, a joke's through and through, but he's got a um, he's got an opportunity with that tournament coming up. But you also see JTE's got an opportunity right around the corner as he is most likely going to be facing Jeff Snyder in his next match. Ooh, that could be intriguing. I feel like they used to hang out. They used to run in the same pack together. The Patriots possibly squaring off against one another. And it is Jete, J-T-E. He of many mispronunciations, but he got all the right questions correct today. He wants to be a part of it. It's a great call, great pull. And JTE and the exchange wind up picking up two more points. And JTE finds himself at 11 and 10. And what a match it was. Thank you to Mark Ellis. And make sure that everybody tonight, if you haven't already gotten your passes at the schmodownlive.com, get them now. If you're not a $10 patron, you can do that and get all the three pay-per-views because tonight, what a pay-per-view it is. You're going to get John Roca versus Ben Bateman in the main event and in the undercard, if you want to call it that. Primetime, Paul Oyama and Ethan Irwin go head-to-head. The winners of those matches will face each other at the end of the month. But what an absolute slugfest both of those matches could be. That's what we got. Mark, thank you so very much. I really appreciate you being here today. appreciate the team, everybody over at Skybound. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you tonight.